when I was in seminary, younger students, younger seminarians loved to play jokes and pranks. That's normal. So in one of our classes called liturgy class, which is supposed to teach us how to do mass correctly, all those things, we ask our professor, Father, is it permissible for the priest to celebrate mass without all the vestments, but only with a stole on? Do you know what a stole is? That, that thing underneath, that thing. That's a stole. So we asked our teacher, can a priest celebrate a mass just with a stole on? And the professor played a prank on us. He said, well, I would prefer that you wear underwear at least. <laughs> so as long as there is underwear and a stole, the mass will be fine. I promise to always wear underwear and a stole when I celebrate Mass here with you at St. Stanislaus. But Catholic religion, like all religions, has many customs, many traditions, all the vestments, bells and smells, the altar servers, the candles, the crucifix, all these traditional extra things. But when it comes to the heart of Holy Mass, all these extra things are not crucial. They make our experience beautiful. They lift up our spirits, great music, good vestments. All these things are important, but they are not necessary for the Mass to be Mass. Let me see if you know your Catholic theology and Catholic catechism. What is necessary for the Holy Mass to be valid? What elements have to be present for the Eucharist, for the Holy Mass to be truly Catholic Mass? Give me some ideas. Let's do brainstorming. What the priest, you are smart, yes, the the validly ordained Catholic priest has got to be there. What else? Yes, the bread and the wine. So we call them the Eucharistic species. Bread and wine have to be there. What else has to be there besides underwear? An altar? No. It's a beautiful thing, but it's not required for the Mass to happen. Uh, Yes, people. There has to be at least one people, one person, in addition to a priest, for the Mass to take place. So we have three minimum requirements. A validly ordained priest, right? Bread and wine, the Eucharistic staff, and the church, the people. A priest should not say Mass just for himself. For the Mass to be truly Catholic, there needs to be a priest and the church, so at least one server, one person in the church to pray with the priest. Some of you may remember in the good old days when priests had Masses all around and the side altars, one altar boy would go with the priest to that Mass because for Mass to happen, there has to be a priest, bread and wine, and the church, the people. So all these nice vestments, all the books and the candles and shiny things and cross are nice, beautiful, but they are just bonuses. They are not essential to what it means to pray the Holy Mass. They make our experience positive. They lift up my soul. They make it easier to pray, but they are not required. You are required. 
I am required and the bread and wine is required. In the times of Jesus, Jewish religion was like Catholic religion today. It was filled with many customs, with many traditions, with many extra activities that one had to perform to be a good Jew. And so washing of the hands, washing of the cups was one of such traditions. Some of the Jews have noticed that Jesus and his disciples do not observe all these customs, that they treat them lightly. If it happens, it's good. If it doesn't happen, we move on. So they ask Jesus, Teacher, how come you and your friends do not observe all the rules of our religion? How come you take them so lightly? And what Jesus says is amazing. He says, it's not what the out it is not what is on the outside that matters. It is what is in your heart that makes a difference. A true religion, the essence of our religion is not my vestments, it's not the candles, it's not the rosary or Bible, it is what is in your heart. That makes the heart of Christianity. All the Bibles, missiles, vestments, crosses, rosaries, they are good, they are wonderful, they are beautiful, but they are not the essence of what it means to be the follower of Christ. They are nice additions, they make it beautiful, but they are not at the heart of our faith. In a moment, we'll celebrate two baptisms. And so one could ask, what is necessary for baptism to be real? Do you know the answer? Yes, baby, <laughs> exactly. You need to have a person who hasn't been baptized yet, and you need what? Water, any water, any water will do. And you said the priest, uh, you need anyone to perform a baptism. If there is no priest, no deacon, no bishop, a mother, grandfather, a nurse, anyone can perform a baptism. As long as the person takes a water from the sink and says, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the baptism happens. All the candles, the oils, the bells, and the smells are cute and sweet, but they are not essential to what baptism means, to what makes baptism happen for real. Now think about your life as a husband, as a wife, as a boyfriend, or as a girlfriend. Sometimes we confuse what is essential with what is just a bonus. Sometimes we think we take the things that are cute and sweet and we make them up to be the most important parts of our life. Sometimes we forget what are the true priorities in our life. You think that if your husband doesn't bring home a good check, he is not a good husband, right? Uh, a good check from your husband or wife is sweet and nice, but it doesn't make him or her a good husband. It is one this in our heart that truly matters. Sometimes we get so involved in our lives that we forget what is truly essential and what is less important. Today's gospel, in today's gospel, Jesus reminds us to keep our focus on our heart, on the things that really matter. Don't let 
all the bonuses to become your priorities. Remember that what truly matters is invisible to the eyes. What truly matters can be found in your heart. Amen.